welcome to this very special issue of Staffing Monthly, where we are doing everything that we can to recognize and celebrate some of the uh, the best, most successful women in the staffing and recruiting industry. And this session or this interview is no different. I'm actually really pleased to introduce you to the Vice President of Organizational Development with Seat Careers. Her name is Sarah Luxinger, and she is going to be sharing a little bit about her journey and what she's doing to be successful today. And Sarah, I just want to welcome you to Staffing Monthly, and thank you for being here with us. Thank you so much, Daniel. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. So just, just to get started off, to, to get to know who you are, tell me a little bit about how you landed in this industry and a little bit about your journey to, to get to a VP role. Great. I will tell you, just like everyone else um, probably tells you, that I didn't wake up one day and say, oh, I want to be in staffing. I need to find a recruiting job. So I wandered into Seek Careers uh, in 1993, and I was looking for a customer service job. I was hoping to be a placement. And they said, hmm, let me, let me talk to you a little more. And so they brought me into the company, and it, it was just like one of those things where you were like, oh my gosh, I love this. And it was, I was very young, but at the beginning of my career, the one thing that I remember just absolutely loving was how no two days were alike, how I got to continue to learn, and how my days just flew by. I felt like I was always accomplishing something helping someone, um, reaching goals. And I was loving every minute of it. That's amazing. So, so how did you go from that and that growth all the way up the chain to where you're at today? How'd that work out? So very interesting story. So when I first was interviewed by the president of the company at Seek, he asked me, what job do I want in 10 years? And I looked him right in the eye and I said, I want your job. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you're even going to work out here. And so I said, okay, just watch me. And so I had set my sight that one day I wanted to be in his, his position. At the time, he, was, he wasn't president of the company. He was vice president of operations. And I didn't know what I was doing really or saying. <laughs> I didn't know what he did for, for a job. I was 23 years old. But as I continued to move in the career, that continued to be my goal. I really wanted to make an impact and wanted to help grow this company. And I wanted to um, move up in the organization. So I will tell you that my journey at Seek had me work in every single role from sales um, to branch leadership. I opened up branch new offices. I was a district manager, I was a regional manager. And then I thought, maybe I want to do something else. So I quit my great job at Seek and left for two and a half years and went into publishing, which wow. was a great experience. But I knew, I knew within days of leaving the staffing industry that just wasn't for me. But I don't like to give up, so I didn't. And I stayed in an industry for a couple of years. And then I had dinner with our CEO and founder, Carol Schneider, and said, you know, would there ever be a spot for me to come back to seek? She said, what position do you want? And I said, I want to be vice president of operations. And she looked at me and said, well, we don't have anyone in that role right now, Sarah. Um, and as fate would have it, a couple, um, I won't bore the whole publishing story, but as fate would have it, I did actually go and um, things kind of worked out so that I was available to go back into staffing. And so I said, Carol, I'm ready to come home. And she said, when can you start? Uh... And so in 2007, uh, I came back to seek. And um, she gave me a list of things that she wanted me to do as uh, vice president of operations. And we just started to make that happen. Uh, 
I should tell you that I did that without a college degree. I love that. I love that. And uh, you and I, we're kindred spirits here. I, I love that piece of it. So let me, so let's switch it back to other people. So the fact that you stepped in, and you're 100% right, most people just sort of happen upon staffing. No one really sets out to be a recruiter, right? But what advice would you give to any any other women that are out there that are thinking about recruiting or staffing as a career, or maybe they've just started it and they're just working a desk. They're kind of starting out like you did. Like, what advice would you give them on their journey as they work their way up the ladder? The advice that I would give them is to just take every opportunity to learn everything that they can. Um, look up, not side to side. Go and reach out to people in the organization who scare you the most and learn from them. Ask them to be your mentor. Ask, how can I improve? What do I need to learn? Find out what they love about their job. Be curious and just ask questions. There is always opportunity for everyone to have a seat at the table. And if there's no room at the table, go find your own table and go, you know, so you can get it. it. Yep. Get it. Just don't just keep looking. Go up. Don't go side to side. I love that. I love that so much right there. And if there's not room at the table, go find your table. I love that. That is uh that is solid advice in which I'm sitting here listening to this. I'm like, man, we need to we need to get you back on and do a feature, a full length feature interview because there's just so much knowledge and wisdom mm-hmm. I can imagine. Uh, and I love that. So, but I got to tell you, staffing referrals they work with a lot of companies and a lot of people. And when I asked them, I was like, hey, you know, we're doing this issue, we're celebrating women, so I want you to connect me with the top person, the the best person in your network that just embodies the the woman that needs to be celebrated and they picked you so they clearly see something in you they know something about you so help me understand what is it about you and that makes you such you know a solid recruiter what are some tools you're doing some techniques you're deploying to just help make you successful so that's a great question and you know really one of the tools that is so vital. I don't care what industry, what niche you're in. Um, If you are in tech staffing, if you are in nursing, if you are in light industrial, uh, our industry is so heavily um, reliant on referrals. And one one of the issues that we had was it was difficult to track. There is not a great system for tracking referrals. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's true. I've been there. I have. I've seen that lack of system firsthand. So our system was fully on paper. It was um not transparent to the employees. And it was not something that we could track. We couldn't look at our metrics and say, all right, we're spending this much money. We're having these many referrals. <coughs> I'm so sorry. No worries. No worries. Uh, is that we we had no data to go off of. So when we're spending money with places like Indeed or ZipRecruiter or other job boards, um, we couldn't really give accurate statistics behind what was really working the best for us. But we knew that we got people into our, our doors more often and in any other way through employee referral. Hmm. But unless it's sitting in your face saying, who do you know? Um, you know, we couldn't, we, we didn't have a good tool for our recruiters. And so when we came across staff and referrals, we were like, aha, now we have this digital platform, which our recruiters can share, which they can give to the employees. And the best part about it is that there's automatic follow-up to keep that top of mind because the best referrals don't come from when I ask you for them. (laughs) They come when you're talking to other people. That's true. When you're out on the ballot and somebody says, Oh, I'm looking for a job. And you're like, go to seek. 
this is this is the you know here's my referral link and you can do it in that time frame the quality of the referral is better you you know the the employee will actually have those names and things to call you so it's a great opportunity i think um for us and our people to earn extra dollars how do you so you're the vp so you're you've got some stake in this type of a program how do your people respond to it though like the recruiters because I've been in your shoes. I, I, I've been on that side where the program is just like, uh, and it's just like one more thing to manage and recruiters are like, but I didn't, I never got to where you're at now, the automation and all that, the cool stuff. Um, but how do your people, do they buy into it? Do the recruiters really see value in, in what they're doing with it? Actually, they do. Now it did start that way though, because again, it was another software, another platform, another thing I have to learn. Yeah. And we, we started staff referrals um, you know, probably about four, five months before COVID happened. So oh. people weren't coming into our offices for the, you know, 2020, 2021. And this was a lot of, we weren't doing training with people. Um, so we had this out there and there was a lot of confusion. But what we learned from that was we just needed to get this out into people's into their, you know, into their, in front of them so that they have the opportunity to really capitalize on this. So we celebrate every week, we celebrate our top recruiters um, for referrals and for our, um, for the ambassadors. So the people that are doing the referring. So right. if they invite either one of those and they get numbers and then they place them, we celebrate our recruiters. I think it's just so great for them to be able to go to their their employee too and see, oh my gosh, you referred 10 people, you know, that's going to be $1,000 for you. You know, and then it's also $1,000 going out to those referrals. So it's really a great opportunity. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. So I never even thought about that, Sarah, actually. That's a really good point that you just mentioned is that your recruiters get to tell their ambassadors and say, hey, thank you. I appreciate this. And you get to put the money in the in the pockets of, of their person, their employee, their, their placement, their candidate, however you want to you know, label them. But their ambassador that's out spreading the goodwill of your of your company, like that's got to be an amazing feeling for the recruiter, you know, even though it's not their money per se, but they get to spend house money but they get to reward it. That's a really cool feeling. That's got to be great for morale. It is. And it's really fun when those people get the referrals. Um, and now those that have bought into it just know how easy it is and don't have to do with the slips of paper. Um, they're, they're loving it. They're like, okay, how do I get this information? How do I get this information? And they're constantly looking to see who's referred. They love the leaderboard but they really love the transparent transparency for the employee that they know who they got paid on, who they didn't, and then they can, that they track that. And then all this kind of communication to keep them in the loop and keep them engaged, that that's, they don't have to do any extra work. So that was the best part about the program is there just wasn't, I, I think that that was probably the hardest thing for them to understand was that this wasn't going to create more work for them. This is actually going to streamline the process. But it makes sense because, you know, on the front end, they're comparing it to what they knew before. You know, the very manual paper, you know, process where things were falling through the cracks and people were saying, hey, I didn't get my referral bonus. They were comparing it to that. And they were just thinking, oh, this is going to be more of that. And and clearly it's not, which is pretty great. Um, but I, I appreciate you sharing that piece of it. And it sounds like you work for a pretty special company. So I'd like to, you know, give you the opportunity to to give a shout out about your company. Tell us uh, what makes Seek so great. Absolutely. So Seek Careers and Staffing was founded in 1971. Um, we are a woman-owned, certified woman-owned business. In the we are in Wisconsin and Minnesota. We have 20 offices across those states. Uh, we're in the light industrial space, and I think what makes us different is that <coughs> we. We help people service your success. That's our vision statement. And we look at each person as an opportunity 
um, to make a success, whether it's a placement, um, you know, to put that employee in the right job, to find that customer, the right person, or to be able to say, you know what, we're not the right service for you. But I hope you come back when you, we do have that opportunity to work together. So um, we've been in business for 50, oh my gosh, 52 years. And it doesn't look like anytime soon we'll be stopping. I love it. I love it. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for just bringing the light and energy to this industry that you do. And just uh, thank you for being here. Yep. Thank you.